Hey, I'm Derek Kirk with Pectatron and CG Shortcuts, and I know I'm a little late on the trend train, but I've been waiting to do this TUT for a while. The Microsoft Office ad that came out back in 2018. Yeah, it's already been that long. A lot of stuff has happened between now and then. Anyways, it was a super clean animation that has had a really nice tinted glass or plastic style that I wanted to show you how to set up. Technically, it's really pretty simple and straightforward. We're gonna cover making this glass tinted material by using subsurface scattering because getting your glass or your plastic or whatever it is to have that right thickness and color and absorption can be tricky if you're not using SSS. And SSS can be really tricky to set up if you don't know what you're doing. So here's the time code for when this tutorial starts. Feel free to skip ahead. I just wanna mention real quick, my Redshift Materials Masterclass that I created with CG Shortcuts is now available. 20% off Black Friday this weekend only. Be sure to check it out, use the link below. Also to be sure to check out my Redshift tutorial that's also on CG Shortcuts YouTube. Go over there, give them a like and a follow and a subscription as well. Okay, let's get back into it. We have our scene which is available to download render ready on Gumroad. There's a link in the description below. So in here I've just made some shapes from primitives, gave them a fillet. The PowerPoint logo is a cylinder with the slice feature and the mouse cursor is just a spline I drew and extruded. I got some plane effectors going on and some fields to move the rectangles up nicely as the mouse moves over them. That's all pretty straightforward and basic. The thing I wanted to focus on for this tutorial is not the animation and stuff, which is one thing that makes that ad amazing. There's a lot of great camera moves and animation, but it's just the simple clean style of the lighting and that tinted glass plastic look. So right now we have no lights and no materials. Let's do the lighting first. Now it's important to note that I have my camera already set up. I like to pretend that I'm doing it like I would with the real world. So if I was setting up production, I was setting up a shoot in a studio, I would have my camera framing first then I would set up my lights. And then for 3D, I like to do my materials after the lighting because your materials are super heavily affected by your lighting, especially something like subsurface scattering. So if you can have that set first, you can get your results a lot quicker rather than creating something and then realizing once you add your lighting in there, it doesn't quite look right. Super simple light setup. Let's create an infinite light. Go to Redshift Lights Infinite Light. It's different from other lights because its position doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. You can move it wherever you want your scene. It doesn't care because the source of the light comes from a distant point off infinitely away, hence the infinite in its name. It doesn't ever fall off and it doesn't get dimmer. It's very even all the way across your scene. All that matters is the rotation and you can tell which way it's pointing by this little white line here that lines up with the Z axis. Let's go into our coordinates tab and type in 60 for the H and negative 60 for the P. Infinite light sources are great for something where you need a very strong light that has good strong directional shadows. So let's go to the object tab and actually increase the intensity up to five. This may seem too bright, but it will work when we get our scene and our post effects all together. So one thing that makes this scene so nice looking is this nice little window shadow that gives it this little element of life to the scene as it kind of falls across your scene. So we can actually create that quickly. We don't need to create a 3D window or anything. Again, pretend it's a studio. We're just gonna fake it. We're gonna make a 2D cutout and just move it in front of our light so it casts the shadow correctly. So let's go ahead and create a plane, make it editable, select everything except the outside row and column of squares. Go ahead and delete that. Now with our plane selected, hold Alt and click the cloner. That's gonna put that inside the cloner for you. Adjust the size of our cloner to 400 and the X and the Z. And now we have this fake window frame. So all we need to do is turn on IPR rendering so we can move this around and see where our shadow is falling on our scene. We wanna lift it up out of the way of the camera so we can't see it, but move it off to the side and then rotate a little bit so it's falling on our scene like that. Pretty nice. That doesn't look great right now, but it will in here in a minute. So it's a super hard shadow right now. By default, the infinite light has no softness to a shadow whatsoever but you can go into the details tab and turn the shadow softness up to three. Now we have this nice soft shadow, but honestly infinite lights alone can leave the scene looking kind of flat because there's nothing kind of backlighting or anything like that. So we're actually just gonna add a dome light. Go to Redshift Lights Dome Light. And normally this is where you put HDRI maps or environment maps or whatever, but we're actually just gonna leave it the default white and that's just gonna coat our scene with this really nice white light from all directions and you can see it already looks a little bit better. So this dome light is a little too bright. We just wanna lower the intensity of that down to 0.5. So now we're ready for the materials. Let's start with the blue rectangles. They need to cascade down from darker to lighter. Go over here to the material manager, create a redshift material material. We're gonna go ahead and throw that on our shape. We're going to choose the preset tinted glass just as a jumping off point. And firstly, to make it look more like plastic than glass, we're gonna change our IOR to 1.32. 
Next, scroll down to the subsurface scattering area. We want to control the transmittance color and absorption scale to get the results we want. These are the only two things that we're going to change to affect our color and the way our glass looks. So let's select a nice blue. Now we don't want to go the lightest blue and we don't want to choose the darkest blue for our cascade because the way it's going to work is we're going to actually only adjust the absorption scale to adjust the color of our object as well. So you're going to want to choose the middle of the road blue. So we're going to choose this nice blue here and we're going to set the absorption scale to 0.2. Now it doesn't take a lot. Absorption scale works in a way that the higher the value, the more light is absorbed into your object and it doesn't penetrate through so your object becomes more saturated. Now a smaller value is going to allow your object to be more see-through and a lot more clear. So this is perfect. So lastly, what we need to do is go up to our reflection roughness and set it to 0.45 to kind of give it that frosted look. That's looking good. Now just simply copy and paste by control click dragging that. Go ahead and put that on our other shape and it's nice that the shader graph automatically updates so we're looking at our new material. So all we need to do now is go down to our subsurface scattering and we're going to lower that absorption scale to 0.1. This is going to give us a slightly lighter blue. Once again, copy and paste, put that on the third one, set that value to 0.035. Then again, last one, we're just going to do 0.015. And you can see just by changing the absorption scale, we have this really nice cascading color effect where it kind of looks both thicker and darker into this nice lighter version of the same color. Pretty cool. We can do the same thing, copy and paste again to start for the PowerPoint pieces. We can choose a nice orange and peachy color with an absorption of 0.2 for this. Then we'll make a copy of that and do a low value of 0.025 for the top right piece because it's very see-through. And then lastly for the other piece, it actually wasn't completely see-through. It was kind of this weird in-between color that it wasn't quite see-through and it wasn't really just a diffuse color either. So to create the look that I wanted to create here, for the last material, we make the absorption to 0.15, but we're also going to go into the emission channel, add a darker version of our orange peach color to that, and then set the weight of the emission up to one. Lastly, for the mouse cursor, I wanted it to be see-through, but have a black edge. So let's create a new material. Go to the preset glass, then we're gonna go to the IOR and change that up to 1.8. That's just gonna make it appear a little more distorted as that mouse moves over things. Change the roughness to 0.3 to make it a little frosted. So now let's go to create the stroke effect of that black edge around. We're going to need a curvature node and a ramp node. In the curvature node, set the radius to 2 and the samples to 64. Be sure to type that in because for whatever reason, the sample slider for the curvature node it goes from 1 to bajillion. It's ridiculous. And if you have IPR going and you accidentally click somewhere along this, you can lock up your computer because you're trying to render with a million samples that you don't need. Plug our curvature into our ramp node. Go down, invert our ramp by right-clicking and choosing invert. Clamp it way down. Plug this into the refraction color of our material. And now we have this nice see-through cursor with a classic black edge. So there we go. Now we have our lighting and our material set in our scene. Lastly, we just need to do some post effects. I almost always do color controls to add a small S curve and some contrast as well as photographic exposure. And we can even up the saturation to like 1.3 and add some light bloom. And honestly, you can just do automatic rendering. Be sure to have GI on, use brute force and brute force. Hopefully this was helpful in dealing with some subsurface scattering for creating this like tinted glass look and getting your colors right and things like that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the link in the description below and check out the Redshift Materials Masterclass. 20% off this weekend only for Black Friday. Thanks for watching. See you next time.